All right, hello autoimmune warriors. I'm Dr. Eric Osansky, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about parasites and autoimmunity, and also discuss when someone should consider testing for parasites. And I uh, hope you don't mind the casual attire. I figure since my buddy here is wearing a tie, that would be okay to be a little bit casual today. So speaking of testing, the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions better understand their test results so that they can find or remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. So let's just jump into it and ask the question, can parasites be a trigger of autoimmunity? So there are a few different types of parasites. So there's Giardia, there's Cryptosporidium, Entamoeba histolytica, tapeworm, pinworms. So at least the research that I've done, I haven't seen anything where these parasites directly trigger autoimmunity. So it doesn't mean they can't play a factor in autoimmunity. If you've heard me talk about the triad of autoimmunity, where one of the components of autoimmunity, there's, there's three components. There's genetic predisposition, environmental trigger, but the third component is a leaky gut, an increase in intestinal permeability. So it's possible that these other parasites and worms can potentially cause a leaky gut, which could be a factor in autoimmunity. But as far as a direct trigger, and, and honestly, sometimes it's hard to know if, someone's, if something's a direct trigger or something's a leaky gut trigger, but there are other parasites like Blastocystis hominis. And there's one case study that shows, which admittedly, one case study, we need more research, but there was a case study that shows that Blastus hominis might be a trigger of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And then there is another journal article that suggests that parasites can play a role in the development of systemic lupus erythematosus. But it's also, also I should mention that there's research that certain parasites, specifically helminth parasites, these can help to reduce autoimmunity by increasing something called regulatory T cells. Regulatory T cells suppress autoimmunity. So getting back to because we're talking about triggers of autoimmunity and so when it, parasites specifically. And so I have seen clinically people with certain parasites, especially blastocystis, not, not only Hashimoto's, but I deal with a lot of grave disease patients. So I've seen both types of patients go into remission when getting rid of blastocystis. Now, to be fair, sometimes we're not just focusing on blastocystis. I mean, oftentimes we're doing other things, improving adrenals and correcting other underlying imbalances. You know, people got multiple triggers. So whether it was blastocystis, I don't know if someone, for example, has H. pylori and blastocystis hominis on a comprehensive stool panel, we're going to try to get rid of both. Now, we don't know which is a trigger. H. pylori definitely in the research has been shown to be a trigger for both conditions I just mentioned. So let's talk about treatment options for parasites. So there are a number of different natural agents which could be effective against parasites. You know, obviously there are also non-natural, there are conventional methods such as metronidazole as an antibiotic commonly used for parasites. And for some people that might be an option. Of course, the downside is it also disrupts the gut microbiome. But as far as some natural agents, wormwood, black walnut, clove oil, oregano oil, garlic in the form of allicin, can help, or you know, even if raw garlic, and a raw garlic for H. pylori, two cloves of raw garlic per day for parasites. I'm not sure if the two cloves of raw garlic will help with parasites. I got to dive into the research again, and I might have seen that, but I just don't remember. Ginger root, so we, we think about ginger helping with inflammation, but if someone has blastocystis hominis, the research shows that ginger could help. And Saccharomyces boulardii, same things as for blastocystis hominis, it has been. I know at least one research study that showed that Saccharomyces boulardii was just as effective as metronidazole. So, and, and I forget if it was just the Saccharomyces boulardii, I think so. But either way, usually I don't just recommend Saccharomyces boulardii alone. I usually I will recommend a few different natural agents because to be honest, it's very difficult at times to kill a parasite. And I try to, I don't want to be super aggressive where I'm going, because even certain herbs, if you take, I mentioned oregano oil, if you take really high doses for long periods of time, that could have a negative effect on the gut microbiome. Ginger root, though, is pretty mild. And again, Saccharomyces boulardii, that's a yeast, that's a, a good yeast. So that's not going to disrupt the gut microbiome, if anything, will help. There's also 
something called mimosa pudica, which is an agent that binds to the parasite. And that's kind of a, a newer agent, or at least not, it might have been around for a while, but something I can't say that I heard of. Like even five years ago, I wasn't familiar with mimosa pudica, but that's something that also could help. And, and there's other agents I haven't mentioned, other natural agents for parasites, but th these are some of the more common ones. So next question you might have is how long does it take to eradicate parasites, at least from a natural treatment perspective? Antibiotics might get rid of parasites in 10 days, two weeks, but again, it's having negative consequences on the gut microbiome. When taking a natural approach, it still could affect the good bacteria. I mentioned that with oregano oil and then even wormwood potentially could be harsh on the gut microbiome. Some will do a rotation protocol where you take wormwood, black walnut, and clove oil, for example, for 10 days, take a break from it for 10 days, and then 10 days later because the eggs will hatch. And so pretty much 30-day protocol, 10 days on, 10 days off, 10 days on. Sometimes that's not sufficient to get rid of. A lot of times, actually, that's not sufficient for parasites is what I found. But some some practitioners will give wormwood the whole, you know, if someone's doing it for 30 days or even two months, just wormwood without taking a break. And also it depends on how much wormwood. So there are some formulations where there's a small amount of wormwood, but there's other natural agents. And in that case, probably not a big deal to take it for a few months in a row. So, and, and again, so just same thing with oregano oil. There are times if someone has SIBO, which is different video, it's a different future video, but if someone's relying on oregano oil, they'll probably have to take higher doses of oregano oil for at least a month, but sometimes more than 30 days or so. So again, everything's risk versus benefits. But getting back to the question, how long does it take to eradicate net parasites naturally? It could take, in some cases, maybe only 30 days, but I'd say on average, two to four months. In some cases, even longer. It could say, you know, so there are some people where six months or longer. I mean, the only way to know for sure is to retest. And that's a mistake a lot of people make is they'll, I had, and this, not a single situation, but just recently, a patient who just had testing. So she started up care with me and she had previous testing a few years prior. She saw, I guess, a naturopath. I forgot who she saw, but it was a you know, naturopath or another chiropractor, and she tested positive for a parasite. And again, this isn't an isolated situation. I've had other patients do the same. So in this case, again, she tested positive, I think about two years ago, and then she, she never retested. You know, so not to say that was her main trigger, but it could have been or maybe causing a leaky gut. And again, some people will go by symptoms, the symptoms disappearing, especially if they're having gastrointestinal symptoms. And I understand, even though parasites don't always cause gastrointestinal symptoms, which is something else, another story I have regarding that. But ideally, you want to retest unless if everything gets better, and that person is seeing me because she's not better. <laughs> so if someone gets into remission, there are other blood tests. And you know if they're feeling great, let's say their blood tests are, are looking good and autoantibodies. Anyway, so ideally you should, otherwise it is a good idea to retest. And you now I was talking about another story. So there's a patient that I had a number of years ago tested positive for parasites, even though in this case it was a male, did not have any symptoms. You know, so when it comes, and, and a lot of people do have symptoms. That I'm jumping ahead a little bit because my next question was going to be, should you test for parasites? And again, one instance when you sh probably should consider is if you have certain GI symptoms, you know, stomach pain, abdominal pain, diarrhea, or if you travel out of the country. But the story that I'm going to tell now <laughs> is where a patient of mine, a male patient, he was it overall he was improving at least symptom wise and some of his blood tests but his antibodies weren't decreasing and i that's something so conventional medical doctors will say antibodies won't decrease but natural healthcare practitioners know that antibodies decrease and normalize but long story short he decided to i mean pretty much i didn't do a comprehensive stool panel on him because he was feeling great from a gut perspective no digestive symptoms, regular bowel movements. I mean, everything seemed perfect and they're expensive tests. So I was like, yeah, I, I just think you're going to be wasting your money. And again, this was over well over five years ago. 
anyway, mistake at the time I made, and not to say I recommend for everyone to do a comprehensive stool panel, but getting back to this male patient, six months later, I decided to send an email to see how he's doing because he decided to see another practitioner. And that other practitioner, he emailed me back. He said the other practitioner did a comprehensive stool panel, found a parasite, put him on a treatment protocol for the parasite, and he got into remission that antibodies normalized. And I, I was happy, but at the same time, I was disappointed because it wasn't me who helped him achieve that remission. And it taught me a lesson that you can't just go by symptoms. And so you might wonder, well, why don't I have everybody do a comprehensive stool panel? Because just before I said I don't. And I mean, the truth is, there are some healthcare practitioners who recommend a lot of tests just to rule out things. But there are some people, when I was dealing with Graves, it, I, I took a conservative approach. So that's probably why I typically recommend a conservative approach, but I do give options. So usually I'll give, it uh, depends on the person, but most of the time I'll put on the treatment plan, this comprehensive stool panel, even if I don't think they absolutely need it, but as an option, because again, I may think they don't need it, but that lesson in the past showed me that the reason behind testing is because we don't know for sure. And we could have everybody go through and spend a few thousand dollars on testing, but most people don't have that kind of money. Uh, and if they absolutely needed it, that'd be one thing. But so, again, we don't know, and you could go either way. So if you are taking a functional medicine approach, and if you haven't done a stool panel, and if you haven't received optimal results thus far, then, then and if it's been a while, you know, if you just started and it's been a month, I don't expect you to get optimal results, but you might want to look into getting a stool panel done. But like I said, I don't recommend it across the board. Maybe that'll change in the future. But anyway, be on the lookout for my next video. Where I'll discuss the best test for parasites. And if you have any questions related to parasites, please post them below and I'll catch you in the next video.